Hey, what's up, people? How's it going there? Happy St. Patrick's Day there. See, I got my green on. Look. <laughs> it's faded, but it's green. All right, so this is a pretty cool picture. I feel as if it was like deja vu when I was thinking about it. I, I might have mentioned this place uh, in past videos. And I don't know. It feels like deja vu. I don't believe I actually did a whole episode on the place, but it's kind of like... um. Yeah, it was like a little layup between 59th Street and 68th Street in Lexington Avenue, right here in our neighborhood, on the IRT 6 train, the local tracks. They used to park their trains there. It's kind of like a little secret thing. We never really did tags in there or anything like that. And, um, yeah, Lace actually probably took the most advantage of that place. Even before my time, he was in there jumping around with ESP, yeah, East Side Party, Extra Sick Partners. On the six is him, Nada. I remember Nada did a lot of ND blockbusters in there. Lace would do under the windows blockbusters in the TikTok style. Yeah, never really wrote in the tunnels at all. Um, trying to think. Yeah, so it's pretty much with that place, it would work two ways. You would have the um, guy that would pull the train in at about midnight. I'd like to go there around 12 midnight, even before that. And I'd be in the, ex the emergency exits, me and Lace. We'd let them pull the train in all the way. And then we'd let them go, and they'd either walk out the train. It would go two ways. They'd either walk out of the train, and they'd go eat. A few times we actually followed them. At one point, we had someone that would hang out with them. Like, of course, not hanging out, talking to them and nothing, but, you know, straggling behind. They'd normally go to the Tramway Diner and buy a coffee, like a Danish or something like that. And they'd do crossword puzzles and shit. But they would, two hours, you would have in there. So for two hours, that's why we'd be in the hatch waiting for the train to pull in. So this way we, we, every minute counts, you know. Now, the guys would sometimes, like I said, it's almost like 50-50. In the winter, they kind of hung out in the train more so than going up to the street. But they would always leave the train and go and eat something. I guess it's like a break for them or something. And about 2.30 or something like that, they'd be pulling the train out. That would be one way. Now, there's another way. When they pull in the train, and the guy that drives the train and the conductor and shit like that will actually just stay in the train. Like, they'll go in... The, that car, and they'll just sit there, like, go to sleep for a little while, something like that. They'll literally sit in the pitch fucking dark. As weird as it sounds, that's what they were doing in the 80s. They just sit there, not even really, like, reading the paper or nothing like that. They would work there or something. Sometimes they'd pull out, like, a little sandwich or something like that and start eating it. So that kind of sucked, to be truthful with you. I mean, we'd still do shit, but the good thing is the motor man and the train that guy that's driving the train, they meet each other, like, in the front of the train, literally hang out there. Sometimes they have, like, a little flashlight or something like that, but they would hang out there the whole time and not go out of the train and go and eat and nothing like that. They'd sit there the whole time. So we would just go down a bunch of trains, which... We like to hit the front because it's deeper into the tunnel. When you start going this way more, you're getting closer to 59th Street, which is a pretty busy tunnel and station. Even though we're talking about midnight and shit like that, there's actually like a little police station in there. So you don't want to go too far. I mean, the smell of spray paint back in those days, they knew. Like the cops would be like... Someone's writing graffiti. But that wasn't really a known place. Like I said, people, it's not like the one tunnel or something like that. You have know, City Hall, with it, you know, again, off a, or a spinata, some shit like that. You know, it's not like a hot known place. Matter of fact, it's just us that was going in there, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, Gary Sash, yeah, Pinedo, he went in there. Um, he might have invited a few people there. Um, but yeah, Lace did a lot of stuff in there, man. I remember even him doing the money train. He did the money train. did a quick fucking blockbuster under the windows, end to end, while the money train was there. And they don't leave that fucking train at all. Like, the motor man stays there. The police that are in there, literally like 12 cops or something like that, on that fucking thing and while he was painting it. Yeah. I was like, dude, I don't know, man, this and that. You know, he's like, well, just keep an eye out, man. <laughs> so, all right. And, yeah, he pulled it off. Uh, 
Yeah, a lot of good. But you know what was weird about that place, too? You never knew where to go to take pictures. I myself wasn't really into that, but you could do something in that. And like I said, it would pull in on the six train local track, pull in from 59, and go up towards 68. Boom, and it'd be closer to 59th Street than 68th Street. If you're ever on the IRT 6 train platform at 59th Street, Bloomingdale's, walk uptown on the station, either one, the downtown or the uptown, and walk uptown, and then just look in the tunnel right there in front of your face. You'll see there's a three sets of tracks, but everywhere else it's only two sets. It's because they pull a set in there. They pulled 10 cars in there. It's enough to fit 10 cars. They used to put the money train in there. Um, then the garbage trains would be in there. Uh, they would pull the garbage trains in there. These things with these big bins. They would have them. In there. I remember once or twice just scheming on writing on all the little bins and shit like that, which was pretty good. I mean, I don't think they ever buffed those tags. They probably just faded. I'll tell you this guy, if... And when DTA and uh, WKS, he had a lot of those fucking bits, man. Yeah, he passed away. I think on Halloween he got murdered or something like that. But yeah, he used to have a lot of them bits. Sev also, Sev downtown, you know, TDT. Yeah, he used to have a lot of them bins. That's when they used to come out with them thick, fat silver markers. You know, like originally they had the small Pentels, and then they started coming out with something that was thick, like a fucking, you know. You know, something fat like this thing, but made with silver like silver oiling. I remember Seb used to catch a lot of those dumpsters. Like inside the dumpsters, the sandbox, the end of the stations. Yeah, he used to have a lot of those. But um yeah, definitely a cool place, man. Like I said, a lot of those uh ESP guys were in there a lot doing a lot of stuff. Uh yeah, no one was really up in the tunnels except like, I brought ripe there, so there's a couple of ripe tags. Like, there's one um, signal box is what they call them. They paint them silver. There's one of them there where it's got a couple of tags on it. I think a form tag, ripe, a form I brought in there, too. He, he ran through there, hit 10, set, you know, 10 cars with the FO fillings he used to do. I remember form doing, like, a straight letter blockbuster on there. It ran on the 6 train for a while. I forget. It was, like, beige. And then, like, antique white above it. And I think it had, like, a true blue outline. And he did the whole side. Boom. Form. Yes, for, for a hot minute, we were really picking it up on them sixes. Uh, dudes from Queens that started going up there, you know, for hitting that place. And hitting up in Zariga with me a couple times. Yeah, what else is there about that place? Yeah, did a lot in there. I've done some blockbusters in there quite a lot. Um... I've even done insides, and uh, when a guy left, broke out, he went, and I left the place completely, I was like, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I ran through there with some black spray paint. You had like two hours, two and a half hours to really go through shit. And I remember I did a blockbuster. So it was under the windows, like a panel, like a panel size, not too big. You know, I just had like one silver and one black or something. I had some black paint left over, and I ran inside, and I did the insides, I remember as I was getting, because the hatch back then, they didn't have like these alarms and shit. It was literally, I was on 62nd Street, so the hatch was like 63rd? No, yeah, it was 63rd at Lexington. So it was like two blocks from my house. I put a little bottle cap. You got like these metal bottle caps. And I put it on things so the hatch don't lock, but it stays open like this. Well, you could pop it, open it with your fingers, go in and out. So I'd, but when I'm leaving and I'm done, I'd pop right out that hatch. I'd slam it down so it's locked, and I'd go home. I'd enter in through 68th Street. I like to go because, like I said, 59th Street's a little more busy being the fact that it had Bloomingdale's. So I'd normally walk in from 68th Street, Hunter College, which used to be a problem, too, because 67th Street and Lexington Avenue, you had the precinct. You had the 19th precinct. So sometimes late at night, you have cops going home from work, or maybe they got injured or something, or they're taking off a day, they don't feel good. You have the possibility of cops, but late at night, there's no one there, you know, like fucking 12, midnight or something. It's a weird hour, because that's when they do actually change their shifts. 
So it was kind of weird with that, but yeah, we manage it. And then down at 59th Street, they actually had like a little MTA precinct in there. In between where the uptown and the downtown, there's like a tunnel that goes like this that connects the two. So if you want to switch from like the MVR or the downtown train, you could switch to the uptown. And then they had a little fucking room. I remember I got caught throwing fireworks at a train station. They brought me in there and they wrote me up and stuff like that. So it's like a little precinct where they could process you. They got a little thing they could fingerprint you and everything like that. And they'll hold you and they'll uh, take you away in a van down to like 100 Center Street where you'll go see the judge. And they actually have a little unit there that's always got cops there and stuff like that. So, But it was a good spot, man. We did a lot of shit in there, man. Lace done a lot of stuff in there. Lace, definitely. Lace pulled off a lot of shit in there. A lot of things. That he, he wasn't even right, Lace. I can't even remember half the stuff he did down there. <laughs> Remember, like jolt pieces. He was doing jolt, J O L T. Did a lot of those. Um, yeah, a lot of different names, man. He went by a lot of different names. All right, yo. Pretty cool picture. That plunger, I'll explain a little more. That's the plunger where the train comes in, plunges into that, and they park it there. Though lace the RD tag. In that picture was done later on when we were just hitting tunnels. We weren't interested in hitting trains. We caught all the six train tunnels going up, me and Lace. So we just said, oh, look. You know, we caught the, the plunger. We figured, why not? It's a good spot. Uh, that tag, well, obviously, that's done with, like, one of them big pound silvers. Well, it's not like silver from back in the days. Now, the note tag, which is PK note from Astoria, Queens, that looks like it could be old. You know, that looks like a skinny cap or something. I mean, you know, those guys are down there doing stuff, too. Like I said, I, I, I brought a couple of those guys from Astoria there. Um, yeah, a note tag there. That looks like it might be an old tag, older than the RD. And there's a Revs also. Uh, the Revs, I think we went right over that. But that would be when he's running around doing his little diary in the tunnels or some shit. He wrote that tag. That wasn't for any type of writing on trains or anything. But yeah, I believe there's a Revs tag underneath me and Lace. Uh, Revs, you know, he was running around with his diary, and, uh, and the stuff he was doing in the tunnels, in the nineties, probably when he did that. Yeah. I don't know what else to say about it, but boom! I hope I'm not repeating my repeating myself, and this is like an episode on top of another. Yeah, so I guess in closing, the best way to put it would be that was a fun place, man. I mean, it had to be on your toes. Like people, like I said, they wouldn't leave. Those guys would stay in the train. You would just have to sneak past them and go in the middle and paint slow. But then if you paint slow, you run out of time. And the reason I say paint slow is so you don't stink up the place like uh, painting real fast and having a lot of smell and uh, accumulating at once. Normally, you if you go slow with it, you know, but yeah, it definitely you had to be on your P's and Q's in there. And I never had problems I could think of. No, not there, but down underground further. Like that's the same station, like the 59th Street and Lexington Avenue on the 6th, right? It's a big station, like I said, Bloomingdale's. You have down under that, you have another set of tracks, which is the 4, the 4 and the 5 train. Now there, that's where I was describing that. The guy's like, this is, this is someone in there? Like when we're hitting the tunnel air all the way up to 125th Street. There I had a problem. Yeah, I actually tipped over. I had a bag of spray paint on my back. I was dizzy from using so much. And so Lace and Andrew pulled me back like this. Like someone over there. You know, the guy was cleaning the station while we were trying to go around and start going back up down. So I pulled back. I was like, Whoa, whoa. Like a turtle, I fell over and a big hit on a knapsack full of spray paint. But yeah, that's the same station, but a different tracks. That's the four and the five. Then you had the N and the R, which would go to Astoria, Queens, or go down out into Britain, go all the way down Manhattan, normally around the Broadway area. Yeah. So it was a big station. Yeah, a lot of shit going on. <laughs> and yeah, but you can pull it off. Uh, we did. I mean, yeah, at least it really took advantage of that. Me, I've probably done about five things in there, maybe six things. I mean, they're all pretty big, you know, other than like if I had like little scraps, something like that, like I was saying with the two cans there. I did some insides. I've done that there. Yeah, I mean, normally it would be like an under the windows type thing. Can't really get too high. You don't want to waste too much time. It's also that thing. So you can't really 
do anything pretty there, which was never my style anyway. But laces pulled some off. I'm going to show you this picture. But you know what it is, too? I was thinking. When he did this piece that was in that book, and I'm pretty sure that's the one that he did. The one that was in that um, Getting Up book. Or if not, it was the one that was in that movie, um, Style Wars. At the beginning, when they're pulling out the six grains, uh, you know, uh, from the six yard, at the very, very beginning, and it's like, all right, pull them out, I'll track this and that. You see the lace piece. I think there's a PJ over a, a lace that's like buffed or something. I, Cause I see two laces. I see a blockbuster on one car, half buffed up, barely see it. It's graffiti over it, but you can still see some of the remnants of it. Then you see the lace piece. And I believe it's the same one. And I'll put a picture of it in here. I, he did that in, in there. It's the one that says E-S-P-T-E-D. Yeah, but you see, you know what it was, too? I remember early, early on. They would park them fucking things in there. And they would stay in there on Sunday. I remember that shit would be there, like, Sunday mornings and stuff like that. Cause I remember seeing that shit in there on Sunday mornings early on. like. Before 83, yeah, and, and maybe even before 84, I remember them fucking things being in there on Sunday mornings early, like they might have been there overnight from Saturday into Sunday morning. You know, I remember seeing those things parked in there, you know, so they might have had the option of having it there a lot longer. Like they would actually lay up a set there. And that would make sense too, because Sunday morning, they keep it there all night. And then Monday, rush hour, boom, they pull it right in. That's the heart of Manhattan right there. Pulls it right on the line. They're picking people up, right? Uh, fucking, uh, yeah, 59th Street can pull back and right in. Boom, pull right up to 68th Street. Just start picking people up, go up down. Or it can pull right in 59th Street and start going downtown. Either way. So that, that I don't think he had that much time, uh, but... I do remember earlier, they were actually parking them there, like, overnight, and they would stay there on Sunday mornings. It was my home stop. I remember seeing them there Sunday mornings, early on, before. It's funny, too. It's like when I was hitting the sixes all the way up in the Bronx, late at night. I remember seeing that right there, early in the morning. And, yeah, that's when those ESP guys were really taking advantage of it. Like, it was a layup that might have been, like, a weekend layup. But I definitely remember seeing them in there Sunday mornings uh, in the early, early 80s. Yeah, like before I was even RD or something like that. But then later on, it just started, like, Wednesday nights were cool. It would just be, like, around midnight and stuff like that after that. Maybe if it was real snowing out, they, they would pull something in there, too. And that's the weird thing, like I was um, getting into before, is like to take pictures of what you do on there is very tricky because that thing can pull in and they can switch that shit. And a lot of the time it will go uptown and then turn into a five train or even a two train or a four train. Yeah, from there, they pull it down there because the express tracks, like I say, they run downtown, on, um, down on the Bloomingdale's. Under this track, the six train, underneath that, you have the expresses. So they would just go this way and then pull them in that way and then park them in there and then just send them right up. It's actually a way to take one train off a line and put it on another subway line. Uh, a very quick transfer, you know. I mean, they could do that up in the yard all day, every day. But that's what would happen there. So you might, it might be on a six train track. But the thing you write on could be a two, could be a five, it could be a four, you know what I'm saying? It will wind up every... I mean, originally, it wouldn't necessarily be a two. That's kind of far-fetched. But it could definitely become a five. It's just a matter of time. They just, like, it could pull out. The guy just scrolls down the numbers, you know, six, down to five, you know, four, three, like that's an IRT. They could switch it to anything. You know, when the scrolls uh, that come down and it has the number on it, it's the front of the train, and they just switch the stations too. The little scrolls that are on each car, they just switch it. Oh, they just put it on a different line and run it up. So you might think, yeah, it's a six train. You go up there, wait, and take pictures of that shit. You never see it again. <laughs> Someone tells you about that shit a month later, like, oh, I saw that shit. Yeah, for real, they'll tell you a month later where they saw that shit. And I remember another one too. I remember Lace did a dose piece. D O S E. 
real big under the windows, man. I remember that shit, man. And it came back down. It went up. It came back. Boom. Like it switched. Like I said, I think it switched to a four or a five. Probably a five or something like that. But that shit came right back down. Destroyed, man. Like all them NPC guys, you know, Morris Park. They crossed that fucking thing. Because <laughs> there's a guy in the range, Dose, from the NPC. You know, and they must have saw that shit and got mad. But, I mean, Lace was just fucking around. You know, he had a bunch of paint and shit like that. You know, he, he, ha, 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 you know. Just uh, like I said, it's right here. It's like a couple of blocks from his house. I mean, I live closer to it, but not really because he used to be up on 72nd. You know, and I was on 62nd. So we're, it's almost like the same exact distance. If he's going from to 68, I'm going to 59, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It was right, you know, it's like a place to just, yeah, why not, you know. Go do this, that, you know. But, you know, some of them little on the uh, spur of the moment things wind up being pretty iconic, man. Yeah. Like some of.